Okay, so welcome. This is our third session of um, GitHub training through our uh, Open Fightless community group. And um, this session is about further uses of GitHub. Um, and it's going to so what we're going to cover today, it's further uses of GitHub. So I'm assuming that you're a basic user of GitHub. I'm assuming that you know about forking and branching today, because those are things I'm not going to cover because they were covered in the previous uh, two sessions. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to switch on enable websites in our repositories and how to start editing web pages. Um, we're going to learn how to link repositories to GitHub. So we're going to concentrate on um, Zenodo and Open Science Framework. We're also going to have a bit of a look at how to use project boards as well for project management. Um, so uh, let's begin having a look at um, how we promote ourselves, because that's the reason, in a sense, why, we're good, why we want to make web pages. We want people to know about what we're doing. So this could be um, creating a web presence for yourself. Um, so for example, using a web page as a CV, um, as a blog, um, as, a, as a place to uh, put your presentation, something like that. Or it could be um, uh, more of an advertisement or um, a, a place to present your, your research project online. So that could be um, putting links to papers, it could be again blogging, something like that. It could be a, just a project website to give updates on particular projects. But really, we want to share things in, in a simpler way. So in the sense we could use non-specialist writing, which really is, in a sense, is blogging um, and using uh, web pages with lay summaries and things like that, um, because that would mean that our, our research is uh, for a wider audience. Um, it's also good to invite people um, who are interested in your project to collaborate because you can put your contact details and ways of contributing on these websites. Um, it's um, also about open research, so being open about what you're doing in your research and your project status and inviting people to work and collaborate with you, so to fix things within your repository or your website. And also it creates some sort of branding for you as well. So it's good, as I said, a good advertisement for your work, for you yourself and your work. And you're sort of communicating and making that your work more accessible for them because uh, websites are more accessible than the GitHub repositories themselves. So it gives people another way of accessing your work than if they don't have the skills to interact with you through GitHub, you can enable the website from your GitHub repository to make the work more accessible. Um, to uh, a wider audience. So I think there are two <clears throat> main ways that we can do this. The first is to create um, a profile page, which is actually, it is within GitHub, but you can give out the URL of it like a website and it appears uh, in a nice format. Um, and actually that's really good as a short CV, or you could also do a bit of a project advert on it as well. So you could link it to your personal account or you could link it to an organizational account, something like that. <laughs> and then the other one is using GitHub pages, which is what they call their web pages. So um, the website itself is hosted in a GitHub repository, um, but it enables a website um, called the GitHub pages. And um, that obviously gives you the, um, the web address that you can then share, share in your social media and in other places. So you can do that, obviously I said for yourself, so you can, can make standalone CVs, you can make blogs, you can make presentations, um, or you can do that for your project as well. And all of these links are really useful for sharing on social media, so linking to Twitter and Facebook and all the other social media um, accounts or platforms for um, promoting yourself and your project and your work. So the first thing I'm going to go over is um, GitHub profiles. Um, so I put mine on here just to show you an example of it, but they can look, you can make them look any way you like really. Um, so um, what you have to do is make your profile, um, oh, it's an advert for yourself. You make a repository in the exact name as your account. So for me, my account name is eKaroon. So I actually have a repository called eKaroon. And what actually happens when you make that repository, so you make it in exactly the same way you would make any other 
new repository. So going on to the green new uh, button um, and creating a new repository as we have done in previous sessions. Um, and then you make the name your uh, account name. And then when you create that, um, so press the green button at the bottom to create the repository. And remember to click the create readme little tick bit in the temp in the template, uh, in the in the in the file, is that right? In the in the form that you get for creating new repositories, you actually then um, automatically a templated um, readme gets created into that repository. So it brings you into the repository with a template. And it's that template that you can actually see here. So it gives you all these di different sections. So there's the one that says hi there and you fill in your name. There's one that says I, I'm working on and then you can just edit it for the different things you work on. Um, I'm currently learning to. Uh, so all of these things here that are um, my different sections that I've got on my profile are part of the template. So you just have to add in all of your links, all of your information about yourself or your project. And GitHub itself has quite a good uh, link, um, which is at the bottom here, um, which is a good help page of how to actually do that. So as I said, you can make it for yourself, or if you have an organizational account, you can make it in the organization name um, and it will do the same thing. Um, okay, so, so that was the first most simple way of sort of having a web page about yourself, I suppose, or your project um, in a very simple way. But if you want to create a, a, an actual web page, a GitHub web page, um, there are a number of ways of doing this. And that actually, there are simple ways to do much harder ways. And um, so it depends on your coding skills, I think. Um, but what the GitHub web pages are, is they are really a static site um, for hosting these services. So HTML is the coding language, along with things like CSS that are used for web pages. Um, and you can host these HTML files in GitHub repositories. Um, and you're allowed to um, enable um, the web pages using the settings, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, to get a GitHub domain, which is usually your account name, the name of the repository, and then github.io. And that is the domain uh, name. You can actually now change these to custom domain names as well. So if you want a particular name, maybe a project name, you can have that. But actually, if you have the repository in your project name, that happens anyway. So you don't really need to change it that much. But you can do that now, that's something new. So there, as I said, there are different ways to create web pages using GitHub. The simplest way is just to enable a repository um, using the settings, which I said I, I will show you in a second, um, and just to um, pick a theme and have a one page website that would have all your information just on one landing page. And that's actually pretty easy to do. So I'm going to show you first that one. The slightly harder thing to do is to change the theme and create multiple pages of your website. And you can do this in a fairly easy way using what's called this remote jackal theme, which is another thing I'm going to show you to do. I think we'll give you some links of how to do it. Um, but um, what you can do is um, go a bit more deeper into it if you want to, where you can actually find particular website themes that you like. You can fork those repositories and then you can start editing those repositories within the fork branch. And then you can, um, your website can be enabled from that. And then the hardest still is you can actually create a web page completely from scratch by starting to, by learning how to use HTML, CSS languages, and um, and building it just completely from scratch. And I have to say, I've never done that because I like to do it the like, slightly easier way, <laughs> which is what I'm going to show you to do. Because you can actually you can actually make some really nice websites in quite a simple way. So don't be put off by the hardest ones because you don't have to do that. Um, I have put there are some actually really good resources for that last hardest level. There is a whole carpentry's course about making GitHub web pages from scratch. And actually it's really, really a really nice course and all the materials are available. So I have put the links to that within the shared document um, because if you like making web pages, I have to say I really like making web pages. Um, that's actually a really nice thing to learn. And I would say if you have some coding skills, you would get on quite well with that because it's written in a really accessible way. 
So what do you have to do? So I'm going to move from the sort of simplest to the slightly harder. We're not going to go to the hardest today because we don't have time, but we're going to go from, from the simplest, how you enable um, your GitHub pages on a repository to thinking about how we can start to change them. And that's the stage we're going to get at, because to be honest, actually doing all the editing part, um, it takes quite a lot of time. So we don't have time to do that today, but it, it's something that I think once you know how to enable it and start editing it, then you can have a bit of a play with it and you'll be able to um, uh, progress quite well with it. So what you need to um, do is, first of all, um, you need to create your site. So you need to actually have a GitHub repository that you want to make into a web page. So I suggest we've all sort of made test repositories within our accounts. So it might be good to choose one of those today just to have a bit of a go at this. So I've given you an example of one that I've been using during this course, which is eKorean test repository or test repo. So, um, so I've chosen this repository um, as a repository I want to make into a website. Um, you can see at the moment um, over here, there is no web things. It doesn't say web pages enabled over on this side. So it's, there's no web page to do with it. Um, and what you have to do first is find the settings button. So it's at the, this gray bar at the top, gray banner, and you click on that settings. Then it brings you into the settings pages. So I can see I'm in the settings now here because it's underlined in, in red. And it gives you some tabs at the side, the left hand side, and you want to click pages because the thing to remember is that in GitHub, these are called pages and what they mean is web pages. They're called GitHub pages, but they mean web pages. Um, uh, again, a bit of GitHub terminology that you have to learn. So click on the pages and it brings you to the GitHub pages part of settings. And then what we need to do is just switch them on. So it's as easy as just switching something on. So um, what we're gonna do is just click this here. So what is the source of the GitHub pages? So in my repository, I only have one branch, I have the main branch. So I'm just gonna click the none button and I'm gonna click main. And that's going to enable the website in the main repository. Then what I'm going to do is once I've done that, I need to choose a theme. Okay, so this is the look of your website. So you want it to look nice. Okay, so this is what it's going to be. This is called what this theme is what's going to be rendered like on, on, on a web page. So what, what the look of it will look like. Um, because it because it will be written in Markdown script with some HTML coding in it, but it will look like this theme. Okay, because the HTML script will tell it what theme we are going to use. Okay. So the, the only thing you need to do, so I've already in the last slide I was picking the source. So it's got main now here. Okay. And you don't need to go down to the next button, which says choose theme. What that does is it brings you on to this page here, which you can see at the bottom, which says Cayman theme. And there are basically just some different themes here. I think there's a few more than that. And you just have to click on it. And then you click the green button, select theme. And what that does, that switches on the web page. And it's actually as simple as that. So what you then get is, um, it would take you back to the GitHub pages in your settings and you'll actually see that your site has been published. So you're in this green bar here, you'll get the, um, this is the web address of your, so the domain address of your website. So as I said, it says GitHub, uh, uh, it says ecaroon.github.io and then the um, repository um, name. So I got it the wrong way around before. So it's your, your account name, GitHub IO plus the repository name. So what has actually happened here, though, is um, that it's actually created a new branch for your repository. So even though we told it to go into the main, it does something a little bit funny and it actually creates a new branch for your GitHub, uh, for your GitHub pages, so for your website. And that's OK. You can actually change that if you want to. Um, so what it would look like at the moment. So if you've done that already, you can press on that and it will take you to the web page. And what it looks like at the moment, because it's created a new branch, 
it's actually just takes the name of your repository, which is mine is test underscore repo, a really great web name, obviously. Um, and it's created actually an index file, which is like a landing page of your website. And it's created that automatically. So it looks like this on, on the website. That's what it will actually look like, is what it's automatically put into as a sort of template for you. So you can edit that if you want to, or what I tend to do is I start to make changes. So the first change that I do is I actually move, move the repository, I move the GitHub pages or the website into my main repository because I use the main repository as the website. So there are advantages and disadvantages to that. You have to, if you have a website in the main repository, I, um, that's okay if that repository is just for the website. If it's a working repository that you're adding things to continually, so for example, a project um, uh, repository, you have to remember to exclude some of your files um, while uh, from the web page because it would actually automatically start publishing on the web page all your documents unless you exclude the folders. So I'll show you a bit of an example of that in a minute. Um, and um, so, but you can obviously do have a repository where you have the branch also as the website. So you can do either. It's, it's kind of up to you what, what you prefer. And it's something to just think about the structure, how you want, want the website to be structured or the repository to be structured. So the advantage of using the main branch, so to do the main branch, I would just go to the source again, and I would click that button and, and main would come up and you would just click on the main again and save it. And that would bring it into the main repository. So for me, I, I've done that because my main repository, what it shows on the web page at the moment would be the readme file, because that's the only file I actually have in my repository. But it would show other files as well, actually. It would start to show them. Um, OK, so, so we've enabled the website through the settings or the GitHub pages to start happening. Um, we've um, found the address, which is in the settings. Um, and we have um, uh, thought about moving where the where the website is sort of enabled from a branch that's automatically created or the main branch of the repository. OK, so that we've covered those things. So you want to start making some changes. OK, so you can have this one page website. That's absolutely fine. And I'll show you some examples of that. But normally. A one page landing page is not really enough for a website. You want to create multiple pages. And what you need to do there is you actually need to bring in a themed website from somewhere else. And um, that will actually bring in files which create the structure of the website. OK, so um, what you need to do and the easiest way of doing this is bringing in a remote theme. So in GitHub pages, they use things called Jackal themes. And you can have a look at this website here. So I suggest you all sort of have a click on that. Um, and um, some, most of them are free. Some you do have to pay for. I suggest you don't pay for them. Um, but because um, there are lots of themes to choose from and they are for different types of websites. So one, that, um, one theme that I use quite a lot is called Just the Docs, which is the one that I've got here. Yeah, um, just to show you, Just the Docs. Um, and that's because that is... Um, well, and that's really good for kind of project websites. It has multiple pages. And as the name, it's really just for documents. It's for bits of writing um, that uh, makes it look nice, basically, uh, and gives it a good structure. So you can have multiple pages. But there are other ones which are really good for blogs, um, really good for more visual websites with lots of pictures. So you can have a look at those. Um, and what you need to do to actually make this happen is... Um, you actually have to, so in your um, test repository, you will have a, something called a config file, config YAML file, it's called. This file is what gives your, um, is what tells your website what theme to use, basically. So, and it gives you, it gives instructions on, on what to do, what, uh, what the website should look like, the structure, where it gets the different pages from, that sort of thing. 
So um, to call in a remote theme, it's as easy as, because um, all of the remote themes are based within GitHub repositories, you're basically calling in another GitHub repository to your repository. So within this um, config file, which should automatically be in your um, repository now that you have enabled um, web pages, um, you add in um, this line remote underscore theme, just the docs forward slash just the docs because their um, uh, repository, their account name is called just the docs and their repository is called just the docs. And then once you save that, it will create your website as that particular structure. And then you can go on to look at how you start then changing your website to match and to make it into the structure that you want. So the page is in the right place and um, creating more of a structure uh, here, um, which is my lovely colleague, Malvika. Um, and um, she's um, just enabled, so she's got her GitHub repository here. And she's actually just got one really long um, document here. Oh, not that long, with some links. It's actually to some, um, it's actually to some more GitHub um, training um, resources. Um, but you can see over here, what she's done is she's, um, the, the sort of blurb at the side here, she's changed it to give, give a um, description, but she's added in the web address actually of this repository. And if we have a click on that, um, she's just made it into a simple repository. Um, there is no, there is no actual structure at the side. So like a website where you would have different um, labels at the side, sort of subtitles that you could click on, there's none of that. So this is the most simple of um, websites that you can create. So it's just from your readme file or the, you can edit the index file in the branch. Either of those will make this happen. Um, you just put a big um, document in there and then it's here with the links. So this actually is quite good if you make if you want to make a CV that you can send to people that is a web page and actually your CV would just be one page so you can just do it through this simple uh, enabling um, using the themes that are already within uh, GitHub so you don't really you don't have to fiddle about with any finding any remote themes you can just have this one page website so that's really good it's also really good like my Vika's done here for courses courses as well so if you're running a course you can set up this web page with all of the resources for your your tutorial or your um or your course so that everyone knows where all the resources are so um so that's a really good thing to do these are also really good resources if you want to go and look at them um okay so that's one example and then another example um which is my blog website so and i apologize i haven't written a blog for a long time because i'm very busy um, but it's a, this repository is a blog. Um, I've called in um, a, um, a remote theme. So I've got this, so mine again is from the main. Uh, you can see I've got my web address over here. Um, I'm also pushing this to Zenodo as well to um, get a, um, a DOI for it as well, which is another thing which is good to do for a website. Because website, you're creating something, you're creating the the documents of the blog, you're also creating all the content, you're also creating new code as well. So it's good to um, have that sort of um, archived. So the things that we've got here are um, the config file. So if I just click on this, so you can see at the top here, I've got a remote theme. So I've used the beautiful jackal theme. Um, and then underneath here is all of the information that creates the structure of my website. Um, so I've got the URL, I've got my name, I've got the different pages here. So this is the navigation bar at the side. Um, and I've got, um, you can put social media links in there as well, which I think I've got some. So these are, this is my, my sort of navigation bars actually at the top, not at the side. Um, and then I've got my different posts. So this, this is quite a simple website because it's a blogging website. So all the main blog things are on the main page. Actually, I haven't got any social media things on here. So I haven't enabled it properly. But um, yeah, I haven't added anything here. I should add my Twitter probably um, and do that. But you can add all of these things here. 
Um, and then, yeah, and then all the, these are other instructions. So you might be thinking, where did Emma get all this from? Emma's an amazing coder. I am not an amazing coder, okay? Where you actually get this from is, um, is from this actual GitHub repository. So if you go and actually have a look on this, I don't know if I can find the actual repository now. So from that website of the free Jackal themes, you can click on them and it takes you to the GitHub repository for that particular theme. So this is the repository for that I've called in to my website. So this is the person who made it, Dean Atali, and this is theme is called Beautiful Jackal. So what you do, all the instructions of how to use them are on here. And you can just, you literally just follow the instructions of what to do. It tells you actually exactly, look, build your website in three steps. So I've done it slightly differently because I've called in it remotely. He's talking about forking it. So actually I, I would ignore this first step. I would ignore this second step. And I would just go for this customizing the web settings. And it's slightly different to what he said here because what I do is I use his config file here and I literally copy and paste that into my config file. And then I start to edit the details. So everything that's kind of grayed out is the instructions that he's put in there. So it's actually very easy to follow the changes because it tells you what you have to do at each stage. Like this bit is for the footer for social media. So you can just add in, change, take all his stuff out and you add your stuff in. If you don't want it there, you can put the little hashtag in front and it won't appear on your website. So you don't really need to be like a massively great coder or anything. You're literally doing a lot of copying and pasting and putting in your own details to this config file, okay? And this is, this is great open science because you're reusing somebody else's work. And he's very happy, this person, it's free. Um, he's very happy for you to um, use his website and he's provided a lot of information. So all of this detail, you can see the original. So this is the original um, web page um, that he's created. Um, and yeah, and you can see um, all this information. There's a lot of uh, information. Just the docs website is also the same. It's really nice. And it, um, it gives you quite a lot of instructions of that because there's a little bit more detail in the structure that you have to put into that one. But again, you can just read through it. It's very simple instruction. There we go. Okay, so um, we have actually all done our exercise now on having a go with profile pages or um, creating simple websites. But I just point you again to um, the slides for the different examples um, of um, the simple website, the um, uh, remote themes, uh, Jackal websites, um, and then building more advanced websites. So there's one about um, Jackal websites. There's another one you can use actually called Hugo, um, which a colleague of mine, um, Sarah Gibson, has written a really good tutorial on. Uh, and I think there's also a video. I saw um, another video last week about Jackal and GitHub pages and making those, but it's much more an, of an advanced advanced way of doing it than the way I've just shown you. Um, oh, I've spelled Carpentries wrong, but Carpentries, this is the course which I said was to, to build it from scratch using HTML and GitHub pages. It's a really good course. Um, so I would recommend that if you want to learn how to use that. Uh, I'm sure people will start, this is a new course actually, so I'm sure they will start actually running it as a, as a sort of online course with, with, with um, instructors, but at the moment it's just the resources and you can work your way through them, but it is really excellent.